With our refrigerators having more food-like products than actual food nowadays, health problems are becoming increasingly more common. We constantly ignore our organs pleading for mercy. Our ever-ignorant lifestyle can have a damaging effect on kidneys and can cause kidney stones, medically termed as renal calculi. These solid crystal masses can develop anywhere throughout the urinary tract. In this video, we'll be discussing their types, symptoms, and diagnosis. We'll also cover the risk factors involved, the correct treatment one should opt for, and preventative measures. So sit back and fasten your seatbelts. You are in for a ride, I promise. What are the types of kidney stones? Don't imagine all kidney stones as crystal blue ones coming out from your body. Kidney stones can vary on the basis of their composition and are classified under certain types. Different types of stones contain different components, such as calcium. Kidney stones often contain calcium oxalate. They can also be made up of calcium phosphate or malleate. Foods such as your favorite fries and chocolate contain high amounts of oxalate. So you know what to avoid. Yup, your mom was correct in warning you about it. Not to worry though, we aren't only banning your fast food favorites, even beets, spinach, and peanuts are oxalate rich. Uric acid. People going through chemotherapy or gout have increased risk of kidney stones. In general, such stones are more common in men than in women. Purines are colorless substances present in animal protein. High intake of these purines can increase the pH of urine. As a result of acidic conditions, these stones grow more favorably. Struvite. Women with urinary tract infections usually have such type of stones. Since the size of such stones is large, it can even lead to obstruction of the urinary tract. Cysteine. This is a rare type because of the genetic disorder causing it is rare in itself. Cystinuria is a disorder that occurs in both men and women. This type of stone is formed when a naturally occurring body acid, cysteine, starts leaking from the kidneys into the urine. Looking at the types and their composition makes it clear that food can impact our kidney health significantly. Want some healthy options? To learn about 13 foods that make your kidneys healthy, watch our video link down below. Now that we know the types of kidney stones, let's have a look at the risk factors involved. Risk factors. Kidney stones are more common in people ages 20 to 50, but they are increasingly common in premature infants with kidney issues. Production of less than one liter of urine a day indicates a high risk of developing kidney stones. Statistically, men are more prone to kidney stones than women. Having a history of kidney stones can increase your risk of developing one in the future. Family history also plays a similar role, so get ready to play the blame game. Dehydration, obesity, and gastric bypass surgery can also act as contributing risk factors. Symptoms you should be paying attention to. Severe pain, medically known as renal colic, occurs when a kidney stone starts moving down the uterus. Such severe pain can make people restless and can spread to the groin area for men. So stop ignoring those pains. Blood in the urine along with foul smell is also a distinctive feature of kidney stones. This can be accompanied by common symptoms such as vomiting, nausea, and chills. If the stone is too small, it can even go undetected and pass in urine without any pain. Everyone wishes that to happen, but it's not that simple. Diagnosis. Diagnosis of kidney stones is done by studying the complete medical history of the patient. A physical examination is followed by blood tests for calcium and uric acid levels. In order to test kidney functioning, creatine clearance and blood urea nitrogen tests are performed too. Past urine can be checked for the presence of any pathogens, white blood cells, or pus cells. For prescribing correct treatment, kidney stones passing through urine is assessed for its composition. Apart from these tests, an intravenous pyelogram and abdominal CT scan can also be taken. 
With patients showing disrupted kidney functioning, the contrast dye is used to help in the better detection of stones. The treatment. Treatment is specific to the type of stone a patient is having. High intake of water is taken orally or is given in the form of intravenous fluids. The samples are then tested to determine apt treatment. Once it's done, any infection is treated with antibiotics. Pain relief may require narcotic medications, and a prescription will probably be given for treating existing stones. Thiazide diuretics can prevent more stones from forming. To help treat urine's acidity, sodium bicarbonate is used. Large stones are broken into smaller ones using lithotripsy. This technique uses strong sound waves to break stones. Once broken down, smaller stones can easily pass down the ureters. The next step is tunnel surgery. Such surgical procedures are generally used when a stone has grown too much. A small incision is given in the back and the stone is removed physically. In certain cases, stones can get stuck in the bladder. Yeah, like stuck right there. In such cases, surgery isn't advised. Therefore, ureteroscopy is used for the treatment. Ureteroscope is a medical device which is basically a small wire with a camera attached. Such a savior! A doctor inserts it in the urethra and passes it into the bladder. The stone is snagged using a small cage and is finally removed. But how should I keep myself safe, you might wonder. Preventative measures. The most effective preventative method universally advised is sufficient water intake. Large amounts of water should be consumed by an individual to pass the recommended 2.6 quarts of urine a day. Since plain water intake is difficult to increase after a certain point, alternatives can be used too. Lemon lime soda or fruit juices can make the prevention an easy feat to achieve. Citrate juices can even help in preventing low citrate forming stones. But remember, oxalate intake should be limited. Lesser salt and animal protein consumption can significantly lower the risk of developing oxalate stones. So if you think you might have a kidney stone, do your best to consult a doctor. Ignorance isn't bliss when it comes to your body. Do you think one should opt for surgical removal of kidney stones or wait for it to dissolve on its own? Let us know what you think in the comments section below. Enjoyed this video? Hit like, share, and subscribe to Bestie. Wait, what kind of Bestie are we if we don't tell you about our other awesome videos? Go ahead, choose the left or right video and enjoy.